Greetings. Today, I'd like to talk about keeping records. Now, boy, is that a boring subject, right? Okay, I can see it now. Everybody's walking away. And I, 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 I keep a record. Um, it sort of dawned on me here the other day uh, as I was watching hummingbird moths fly around the yard. And I had been asking myself, question that I didn't think I had seen these moths around in the same quantities that I had seen them in previous years. Uh, they are here on this place one of my major pollinators. We get so much of the work done by this moth. Uh, it's very agile and it can fly just like a bee into every flower because it hovers our hummingbird. Um, they have an advantage over the bees because bees can really only fly when the weather is good. Uh, when it's pouring rain around here, bees don't get out much. The hummingbird moth doesn't seem to care whether it's uh, sunny, whether it's dim, whether it's cloudy, whether it's raining. Uh, the thing will fly in the dusk, it'll fly during the day, it flies at night, and it will fly in the rain if it's not too heavy and continue pollinating. Anyway, that's a long story. To shorten it, I hadn't seen enough of them around, and then suddenly Lately, I started to see a lot of these moths in the area, and I went, ah, okay, it must be fall that they come in, but as a conflict in my memory, because I recall them pollinating my citrus trees, and the citrus trees usually bloom in the spring. Um, well, it dawned on me that, you know, Bill, darn it, you know, you're this green garden guy and you can't even remember what you think you know. In other words, if I had written these things down as records so I could go back and check on them, um, I'd have a database that would allow me to be able to extrapolate and go, oh no, the hummingbird moths missed spring this year or whatever, you know, or no, their time is actually in the fall. Um, but I didn't write it down. Why? Well, being a guy who's been known to have a very, very good memory my entire life. I am one of the worst guys you'll meet about keeping records because most of it's right here. That works out most of the time. Most of the time it does. But, you know, as I get older I realize I begin to forget things. I don't remember things as well as I used to. Um, and things that were a long time ago, they fade no matter what you do. You know. Um, Recently, I had been reading some of my favorite life stories on, on YouTube. And when I went back and I looked at these stories that I'd written down years ago, I realized I was already forgetting some of these facts. If I hadn't put them down to writing, they would have been fading away. Ever ask yourself why it is we know so much about ancient Hebrew culture, for instance? The reason is because the Hebrews wrote everything down. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what formed the Bible or the Talmud or whatever you're 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 reading there. <clears throat> the uh, same goes for uh, uh, ancient Mesopotamian culture. You know, the Syrians they they wrote things down there, cuneiform tablets, uh, left little imprints in clay that tell us how many gallons of beer they consumed and blah 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 blah. We know a whole lot about those folks. Um, same goes with ancient Egypt. Uh, the hieroglyphs were indecipherable until somebody came up with the Rosetta Stone that had multiple languages, uh, one I think was Greek, that we could read. And so then we were able to make the translation using the Rosetta Stone. Now we can find out an awful lot about what happened in ancient Egypt because we can read the symbols they left us. We have other cultures, though, that left almost nothing in writing, and we know almost nothing about these people. Or, if they had a writing system and we can't figure out how to decipher it, again, they're a mystery. Same goes in your own life. Things that happened at one point in time, if you don't put them down, you may not remember them later. Uh, in the garden... Keeping records, keeping data, keeping information is all important. You know, I have a weather station here on the farm. 
that uh, I don't have to bother with writing these things down anymore. It's computerized, uh, and it takes care of logging all the data. What was the most rain we got? You know, what was the highest wind speed? How hot did it get? And all this. Uh, this all gets logged in the computer, and then I can go ask the computer the questions, and it'll tell me. Um, so one way or another, of course, the, the downside there is that when things were impressed into clay tablets, you know, or carved into walls, they didn't go away quick. Um, you know, we were lucky uh, in a way that the, uh, uh, the writings the Hebrews did kept getting rewritten and retranslated and so on, uh, so that they did come forward to us in some form or fashion, because those were not carved into stone. Uh, they were written down pretty much. Yeah. Uh, knowing what your weather patterns have been over the last decade or two uh, can tell you an awful lot about what you need to do. Um, knowing when spring started, knowing when the frosts of fall came, knowing the crops. You know, if you tried six different kinds of squash but only one was successful. That was important information. And not just the successes but the failures too. Because you don't want to keep repeating the same failures, you know. I give something three strikes, I would, uh, you know, before you give up on it. But you need to know you haven't been doing well with that. You've been doing well with this. You know, what time of year did you plant it? What was the soil medium you used? Um, you can become a highly educated gardener that knows an awful lot about what you're doing uh, just by writing everything down and then comparing your notes from year to year to year to year. Uh, again, it'll help you keep track of the varieties. That's a really important thing, is keeping track of garden variety. Um, here in Hawaii, uh, I currently think I have memory of all the failures <laughs> that I've tried still. Um, and obviously the successes are out there, you know, smiling at me. So I kind of know who's been successful. But um, I'm already forgetting the number of plants that I've put out and the names of them that haven't worked out well here at all. That's especially true with vegetables. Um, so getting in the habit of keeping records and keeping good records, knowing what to write down, um, you know, if things are calendared, uh, maybe you do them by the day, by the month, however you do it. Maybe they're um, categorized, you know. Maybe you've got information about starting plants and seeds. Uh, maybe you've got information about harvest time, you know, and notes on harvest. There's a lot of ways you can break it down. I think, you know, depending on what's important to us and how we think, um, it probably will be how we decide to break this information down. Uh, for our purposes, but you know, recording things that we didn't think we needed to know, those are usually the ones that you really did need to know later. You know, didn't seem important at the moment. You know, but jotting most things down. So, I highly recommend that you get yourself some notebooks, sharpen your pencils, get on out there and. Since a lot of people right now, this is time for harvest, and for folks in really mild climates, this is time to start the fall and winter gardens. You know, we're in the midst of that stuff. And so there is stuff to log right at the moment. Harvests are particularly important, you know. How good was that crop of late apples? What variety did it come off of? You know, what tree didn't yield this year? Um, all of that kind of information will make you a very smart gardener if you uh, make use of it. Since I seem to be keeping most of my records as digital video these days, well, next time we got a good solar flare and the grid goes down for a decade, you can guarantee that I'm going to disappear from history, too. There'll be no legacy of the Green Garden guy left. This is ones and zeros drift off into the Internet and never heard of again. Aloha. Um, hang loose. Have a good garden.